Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to this workshop. It's, it's such a pleasure to be here today, to be surrounded by such a, a group, such a diverse thinking group of individuals. My name is Sarah Hull. I, um, it's my pleasure to introduce the next session, uh, the goal of which is going to be to really drill down on, on some of the, the questions and the issues that have been touched upon in the morning session related to uh, the, the challenges of designing research, engaging citizen science in an ethical manner, and, um, and developing approaches to oversight. Am I, have I been muted that whole time? <laughs> Shall I begin again? <laughs> uh, my name is Sarah Hull, and I, it's my pleasure to help to moderate the next session, which is going to delve into questions, uh, I, identify some of these challenges, and, and hopefully also some concrete models and solutions related to the ethical design and oversight of citizen science. Um, I come to these issues from the perspective of, of a bioethicist who works at the NIH, who works within the federal government um, for, for 16 years, so, so quite a long time. I am trained as a social scientist who's interested in soliciting the perspectives of members of the public, perspectives that have been missing from debates in bioethics. Um, and, and yes, I also come at this from the perspective of an IRB chair. I am the IRB chair that, that Pietro mentioned this morning. Um, I'm that Sarah, and no, you're, you're not in trouble for your mini-survey, um, both because it was conducted in a manner that collected the data in a de-identified fashion, <laughs> but also because I'm not here to serve as the ethics police today. Um, I'm, I'd like to shed the view of, of IRBs, at least in this space and for purposes of our discussion, as an adversarial kind of a relationship. I think there's um, much to be gained from constructive conversations on what I think are probably, at least on their face, shared goals of designing uh, citizen science in a manner that's rigorous, responsive, and, and valuable to the communities that um, it's uh, engaging and, and working within, uh, designed in a way to uh, minimize the harms of the research to the participant and, and maximize the benefits designed in a way that's transparent and holds up to scrutiny. Um, and so those are some of the conversations that I, I hope our panel will, will help us to engage in. We have uh, a number of diverse perspectives represented on our panel. And uh, like the first panel, we're going to go in a slightly different order than what's uh, listed here in the, um, in the agenda, which I'll, I'll walk us through in a second. But um, some of the questions that, uh, that I'm, I'm hoping will be able to engage with our panelists and, and as well with everyone else in the room who certainly has um, great experiences to bring to bear on these questions. Um, so I'm, in the world that I work in, I'm familiar with um, a fairly well-described set of research regulations, oversight tools, and frameworks. And I'm interested in exploring to what extent those frameworks can be adapted and applied to the context of citizen science, to what extent those frameworks are inadequate and have failed to anticipate the unique perspectives of new players who are um, becoming more in involved in research in different ways. So if I start with the question of what I'm familiar with, I'm wondering to what extent what I know plays out in this setting. And when we bring in people who are coming at it from different ex perspectives, what values and ethical principles and formulations of the existing principles can we spell out to um, ensure that this research is conducted in a transparent and ethical manner? So some of the questions we can explore, um, in general, how do we understand the need for independent oversight of research? Who is now independent from the research? Who's inside versus outside? And who can give a, a, an objective perspective? on? on the ethics of, of what's being proposed. Um, some, how do we think about role-based responsibilities and obligations when the people involved are in, in the science and the design and conduct of the science are different and they're, they're shifting into different entities and roles. So we're now conceptualizing potentially as citizens as the scientists themselves. What does this mean for shifting obligations? These are some of the ideas that were raised this morning that I think are um, would benefit from further exploration. How do we ensure diverse 
representation of uh, the various members of the, the public uh, in research and how do we protect their rights and interests as, as we advance research that's of value to them. Um, so I'm coming at this with an entrenched view. I, I am a member of the federal government, but I also come to it with a very open and flexible mind, and I'm very excited to hear what, um, what this discussion will reveal. And I would encourage everybody to kind of come to it with that same perception. We have existing frameworks that have worked well but are imperfect, and so I, I think we have a lot to learn from each other. So I'm excited to start by introducing Sarah Green, who's going to lead off the discussion from PCORI. Thank you. 